Welcome to the first episode of Bad Radio Art with Sam, and I'm pretty sure I am Sam. This is where I draw poorly in order to give you some idea of just what you've gotten yourself into with all this radio nonsense. This is obviously episode zero, where we'll talk about some of the reasons we're doing Radio Weekend, what ham radio is, and why you might want to be involved in it. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're hoping is only the first radio weekend is this January. And if you're watching this video, it's likely you've already signed up for it. So welcome to Radio Weekend, where there is no fun allowed. I'm talking about an event that's basically 18 hours of AB block. There's going to be sitting at a desk quietly, and then there will be sitting at another desk quietly, but for fun. And that's not a joke. You'll probably have fun doing it. It's also freaking January, so the weather is going to be whatever chaos this planet throws the Pacific Northwest. It might be 10 feet of snow, it might be 70 and sunny, or some portion of the region might even be on fire. Place your bets now. The winner gets whatever weather the rest of us get. Also, there's no kayaking. It's entirely possible I don't know how to spell kayaking, just as it's entirely possible that I'm lying when I say this isn't going to be any fun. But this is something none of us have done before. Not myself, not Camp Quest Northwest, and not the Radio Club of Tacoma. So I thank you for coming along with us for this experiment. Who's the Radio Club of Tacoma? I'll talk about them later. It all starts with this tent, which we've been putting up at camp for the last several years. In 2023, we got this flag, though the flag in real life looks a lot better than this one. From this tent, we can talk to a lot of people over the air. People with cool radio setups far away. People on boats people on planes, people on space stations, and even automated systems on the ends of balloons. We've also built some circuits. And well, if we wanted to, we could track down hidden people with transmitters, all starting from this tent. In fact, we've done a lot of this already. We've spoken to people in New Zealand and listened to a guy from Australia talk to a guy in Africa about their expensive new equipment. We've built jewel thieves and crappy nightlights. We spoke to someone on a sailboat a few hundred miles away from Hawaii and we spoke to a guy flying a cargo plane over Texas. And we've also got plans to launch our own balloons around the world, and perhaps even into space. We can build a system that might allow us to directly talk to the International Space Station. We might play some spy games with the younger campers to track down secret espionage transmitters. You know, basic SIGINT stuff. And that antenna right there? We've built a few of those at camp already, out of garbage. And we'll build more as the years go on. But it all has to start at this tent. We have to know how this tent works. So think of this event as doing cool but hard things to learn how to do hard but also much cooler things at camp, all while you get to learn a set of skills which has served me well and can serve you well for fun and profit. So a lot of introductions to ham radio go like this. You can build yourself a nice radio station, and you can talk to some person over here with a walkie-talkie, or you can talk to some other person with a nice radio setup of their own. And through the power of the electromagnetic spectrum, you can talk to each other. You can have conversations about cats. Maybe you all get computers and hook them up to your radios, where you can exchange pictures of cats over the air. In fact, I did this a lot when I was a kid. Or maybe you get some expensive microwave gear going, where you could even share videos of cats wirelessly. I mean, that sounds great, right? But we have phones! They do this thing! There's a problem, though. Phones can't- wait, no, that's a very different talk. A very different talk. What I mean to say is phones can go down. In a cell phone model, your phone talks to a cell tower, which talks to a central location, which talks to some other central location, which finds your friend's cell tower, which passes the call onto your friend's cell phone. It's all great while those cell towers and central locations have power, and a lot of them even have generators, but no power, no cell phone service. And what if there's a big freaking tornado you want to report between you and your friend? You know, with cars, cows trapped in easily drawn boxes, and happy birthday people flying out of it. And since I spelled it tornado, let's add some tomatoes while we're at it. Tornado, really. Jeez. We will talk about weather spotting and emergency communications in this video series and even more in depth during Radio Weekend. But the magic of ham radio is communication with minimal infrastructure. You're talking to people with nothing but air and your own knowledge. And with amateur radio, you're working together to do it. So let me show you some pictures of some other stuff you can do with ham radio. 
Let me dial in here on my portable computer and pull down some pictures via Gopher. So one of the things I like to do is something called Field Day. It's always the fourth full weekend of June. It is a game where you take your portable equipment to a remote location and operate it for 24 hours. You take your equipment into a field and operate it for a day. Thus, Field Day. You've seen a lot of my Field Day kit. It's the same kit I use in the radio tent, and it was put together to serve both purposes. I do field day with some friends you don't know, plus a number of counselors from Camp Quest Northwest, and I hope that tradition will continue into the years to come. Our build-out for field day is actually pretty small, but one of the biggest field day operations in the country is also nearby, with the K7 LED station. As you can see, they've got a pretty significant build-out. I've been doing field day since I was a kid, and it's been going on a lot longer than that. Here's some video from Radio Club of Tacoma's field day, your hosts for Radio Weekend, sometime in the early 50s. I call it a game because your station, how many transmitters, how they're powered, and how many contacts you make are all plugged into an algorithm to determine a score. For example, here's our score from 2023. I call it a game because there are other people who insist that it is a contest, and they are factually wrong. But contesting is a thing that is very popular in ham radio, and popular with Becky in particular. It often goes on at the place you'll be staying at during Radio Weekend. In fact, just today, I made a number of contacts for the 10-meter contest, reaching several states, Costa Rica and Australia. In a contest, the idea is usually to talk to as many other operators at once, and usually pass along a signal report and some important piece of information. There are often restrictions in place like bands, modes, or styles of operation to keep things interesting. Just like in Field Day, there are points, but unlike Field Day, there are often prizes and awards for the top winners. Related to contests, achievement awards are also very popular, and with Becky in particular. One of the more well-known awards is the Worked All States Award, which is exactly what it sounds like, making a contact with someone in every state. There's also the Worked All Continents Award, and as you can imagine, it's pretty hard getting a contact in Antarctica. Radio Club of Tacoma even has an award, the Logger Certificate, for having an on-air conversation with 10 members of the club. There's also weirder things you can do in the hobby. Here's a guy who successfully powered his radio with an alternative power source. That power source? Potato. And here's a radio that is powered by something even stranger, the human voice. The operator speaks into the radio, and that operator's vocal power is directly converted into radio frequencies. You'd think it'd be a radio that you'd talk into, but no, it's a Morse code radio. It may sound funny, but that guy's beeps and boops made an hour-long conversation with someone a thousand miles away. Last year, I was at the Hackaday Super Conference in California speaking about low-power FM broadcasting. While I was there, some other hams launched a balloon into the air, which stayed up for several days and was able to be tracked into Central Asia. And you know what? This is all stuff that we could do at camp, or you could do on your own, or something you could do with the radio club like the Radio Club of Tacoma. What you choose to do in the hobby is entirely up to you, and the exam you'll take at the end of the radio weekend is the first step towards doing those things. And finally, I leave you with an image from our radio tent at Camp Kirby in 2023. As we gaze upon the sunset, I'd like to invite you to take an example exam we've set up at imnotsquitting.com slash exam. The test exam is made up of the exact questions you could be asked in the final exam. Don't worry if you haven't studied yet. It'll just give you a starting point on your progress, and will also let us know what you already understand so we don't have to beat a dead Architeuthis when you all come around in January. So please take it, and don't worry about what the score is. The only score that'll matter is the one at the end of the weekend. See you next video.